Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Tony's Life and Travel. And today, once again, I am covering AMD. Um, I'm just giving you an update on where everything is and where I think it'll be going in the future. So, for the past week, as you can see on my chart here, um, it's been pretty eventful. So, we had Monday, it was up. So, on Tuesday, it went up on a rumor uh, that Intel um, and um, AMD were making a deal. So, uh, basically, AMD was apparently licensing the IP, the intellectual property, uh, for the graphics card, for the Polaris, I think, to Intel. And uh, that turned out to be not true, right? Also, at the end of, um, was it Tuesday? On Tuesday night, they had the analyst day. The, an uh, the analyst day. And if you remember in my last meeting, I mean, in my last um, video, um, I was saying that, you know, they... Uh, AMD had a, um, you know, an edge, you know, a unique aspect of their Naples server CPU that I think they would leverage. So remember, they had Ryzen, and they were saying that all the, uh, you know, you know, like like no, normal CPUs can only use a set amount of um, memory, but Ryzen could use as much memory as you have in the system, right? They had the same thing, the same benefit with Naples, but. In the in the analyst meeting, what they did was they they showed off a lot of other other things, but uh, amongst them they said that um, Naples will be able to use all the memory as well, and that gives them a unique edge within the server CPU side. But anyway, they, they, I'm going to go through that in a minute. I mean, there they, there was a lot that they uh, brought out, but the the key thing here is that. It didn't, you know, the, the the rumor wasn't right, you know, so that's why we came down. So just as I'm uh, going through this, I can just explain that to you. So um, the rumor, you know, Intel came out and said the rumor's not true. And it declined after that. And this is where we are at the end of the week. So we're at 11.41. If you remember last week, last Friday, we ended at, uh, well, last Monday, so it was 11.25. Okay, let's say it's two five, two six, but still we're, we're higher than last week, last Friday. So I count that as a success either way. You know, that's, it's all right. We're headed in the right direction. Um, the other big thing that we had was the uh, the Nasdaq, the Dow. Everything was down for one day. We had a huge crash, um, and they said that's because of the political situation uh, with Trump, and apparently he gave secrets to Russia. So we had all that going on there um, I'm just gonna quickly go through the the news again you know we were talking about perception previously and then I'll go back on to the, um, the the products that they they showed um, at the analyst day so news again doesn't look all that bad I mean if you went back a few months ago where it was doom and gloom North Korea war war it's not like that anymore actually there's no mention of North Korea here um, it's just Iran's election uh, Trump to, uh, Trump Trump's trip to Saudi was great success. Duterte, Duterte is uh, he's he's basically um, positioning himself and uh, using everything he has um, to to basically get as much as he can out of China and so on. Um, it, it's it's a good game, you know. If you if you really look at what he's doing and how he's talking and um, you know uh, how he's positioned himself. Um, he's just trying to suck the blood out of China at the moment, but he, you know he, he's a small guy. China's big, so he's gonna he's gonna try and do what he can for his own people, and um, I think um, at least he's trying. Um, whereas the last president wasn't doing anything. So anyway, uh, that's that. If you want to read more about it, it's on CNBC. You can read all about it. And if you if you go back a little bit, you know what he's trying to do. He, he went, he became friends with China. Said I'm coming away from the U.S. Uh, then he, you know, he got some loans from them. He's still continuing to get loans from them, and so on. Um, and he's, he's um, you know, he's promising to bring up the uh, Spartley Islands issue later on um, to silence his crit critics, and so on. Um, but I think he's playing a smart game and he's doing well. Um, again, you know, Trump just gave China a sledgehammer to smash an energy monopoly. Um, again, it's not a negative thing, so I'm not really delving into it. Um, there's a madhouse, not a house, cards on Capitol Hill. Again, that's about the political t turmoil in the, in the in the White House. But again, it's not huge. I mean, there's no uh, war breaking out or anything like that. 
and then uh, more investment by Ranko. So generally all positive, a little bit of negative with the White House stuff, but um, at least we're not where we were a few months ago where it was total doom and doom with war. Okay, now going back on to the um, analyst day, I'm trying to make this video quick um, because I know my videos tend to be very long and um, I just wanted to keep you guys engaged. So anyway, at the analyst day, um, so they showed all the products, that all the opportunities that they had. So they were saying that uh, the PC market, they had uh, 28 billion uh, immersion, so that's VR and so on. And remember, the AMD has bought a, um, a VR company recently, right? And they do wireless VR, which is unique and nobody else is doing that. So they're going to be ahead of the game on that. So that, that represents 15 billion. And then data center is 21 billion. Uh, that, that's the opportunity there. So, you know, they, they have great, great opportunities here to, to make a lot of money. And um, with the data center, you remember uh, previously I, I was talking about um, how I was listening to um, NVIDIA's CEO in their earnings call, the previous earnings call, um, and they they were showing how, uh, you know, he was, he was talking about how the data center uh, market, the server, and server market is normally lumped into one, but actually it's not true. There's multiple different tasks that are performed. Some re require a lot of, uh, you know, uh, compute power, and some of uh, them don't uh, require a lot at all. So he was talking about that, and th that's why I said, you know, I think uh, with the the uniqueness of Naples with AMD's chip, um, they will be able to fit in there nicely. But what I didn't know was that AMD themselves had uh, launched. Basically, they they had developed. Uh, they haven't launched yet, but they have developed. Um, server CPUs so Naples they've uh, announced it they're gonna call it epic and um, epic basically is gonna come in different so many different um, what is it, versions so just like Ryzen you had the, the high-end and then you had uh, so you had 1800 X and so on and then it went down to 1700 X and then 1700 and uh, then 1600 and then 1500 it's going to be the same thing with uh, the, the the Naples CPU, which is now Epic. So, um, so the the what what she's trying to do is she's trying she's recognized that within the market. She, I mean, she's seen that Nvidia has shown the way. Their data center revenue grew by a hundred percent a year, and they've tripled it. Not even hundred percent a year. It's actually more than that. They've tripled it uh, in in a year. So, uh, she's seen that I think, and she said, okay, we we're going to build um, a server CPU for every single segment. So if they need something for very little compute power, fine, they can buy the, the low end, which is cheap. If they want something that needs a, a lot of compute power, they can buy something that's high end and costs a little bit more. But remember, um, AMD has always been the you know good value for money. So they, they've been the best at value for money. So it's always been like, if you want something that, that works just as well or better than the competition but at a cheaper price come to AMD that's always been the um, the, the punchline so um, I think they'll do very well and this is where they'll have most of the success um, just trying to go through this so they've also got this infinity fabric which means that they can um, scale up so they can put uh, you know many cores together bit by bit by bit and they can scale up as big as they want to get um, so it says near perfect scalability so they've got 16 cores 32 cores 48 cores and 64 cores so all of that is working well and it's coming together very well um, so that's good I just did uh, basically I opened each page one by one so I could show you like this it's easier so what else did we have? Um, high performance PCs. So this is, I think, this is for the uh, the laptops, which is going to be coming towards um, the third quarter and the end of the year. Um, so you you've got the the second quarter and third quarter. So that's back to school and Christmas time, all that kind of sales. Um, and then uh, you've got yeah, Christmas and New Year's will be in the fourth quarter. Sorry, and then uh, you've got back to school. I think will be in the third quarter, pretty much. Um, so. You've got we've got all that coming, and this is for the um, laptops. So they're showing you've got fifty percent higher performance. Um, 
CPU performance and then 40% higher uh, GPU performance and then the power consumption is 50% less right so that's really good for laptops and they were saying that a lot of the um, vendors you know you got um, Dell, HP, all the rest of them they're going to be uh, announcing the, the laptops and so on and they're also going to start um, uh, launching the Ryzen based uh, workstations as well so all of this is coming together nicely again a lot of this is leveraged towards the end of the year so that's when we're going to see most of the sales happening but I think next quarter should be pretty good. I think expectations um, are pretty low, so there's a good chance. You know, just like there was a really good chance this quarter for there to be an earnings beat, I think that'd be the similar thing next next quarter, uh, this coming quarter, um, and then definitely in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, uh, earnings beats, and then obviously the stock will move. Um, let's see what else was there. So they had uh, Threadripper. This was new. This is based on the Ryzen, so they're doing this is super enthusiast. So, so for for those people who like super high end um, CPUs for um, the the workloads, and I think it's gonna be more like for people who develop movies, real movies, Hollywood movies, and that kind of thing. But anyway, it's gonna have 16 cores, 32 threads, um, and um, they they're basically positioning well with with Intel because Intel has something similar. And apparently they they are it's gonna beat Intel's uh, offering as well, but remember it's gonna be a lot more cheaper, so people are gonna go for it, um, especially with the the movies the way they are. You know, it's, uh, the if they're doing CGI and all that kind of stuff, then the uh, what what they tend to do is they try they try and outsource that to other countries, European countries. So um, again, you know, they try and cut down on costs as much as they can. So I th I think this will do well. Uh, within that context so let's see what else is there majority of PC market revenue margins in laptop AMD hasn't yet released Ryzen for the for those market Ryzen mobile APU are slated to launch in second half 2017 uh, with the future sense CPU cores there you go. so basically they were showing here um, what the opportunity is so so far they have Polaris and that's what it's covering and they were they were saying that the the top end of the market presents fifteen percent of the volume, right? But over sixty six percent of the margin, so the majority of the profit will be coming from the top end. And they just listed all the uh, different areas. So you got compute, uh, you got ultra enthusiast and high end workstations. So like I was talking about Threadripper and so on. Um, and then you got enthusiast or mid-range workstations. Again, you know these are like high end, but not so high end. So and you got performance and ent entry uh, workstations. So that's Ryzen um, and mainstream will be probably uh, the Ryzen 15 and so on. So there's a lot of potential there, a lot of money-making opportunities. Um, and again, remember with Naples as well, uh, as well, you know they call it Epic now. Remember they only have less than one percent of the market share. Intel has 95% of the market share, so that's going to be huge, you know, it just, I think people mistake it, they think, well, Ryzen on the desktop side, they're going to, um, you know, take a lot of market share, and then, you know, it's going to be really quick, right, but I think the server side will be a lot quicker, because if you look at NVIDIA's example, within a year, they managed to triple, so if we go off that, yeah, I know it's not apples for apples, because they're doing GPUs, and, um, uh, you know, and uh, AMD will also be launching the Vega GPU, and I think it's on the next page. They show that. So let's go on to that. So here we've got um, for the data center here, it's got Nvidia's P100, and then you got Vega, and Vega is faster, right, than, than Nvidia's P100. But keep in mind, Nvidia has got Volta coming out as well in the, I think by the end of this year, so that will affect Vega. But at the same time, remember, price to performance, I think Vega will have a lot of traction. But, um, you know, it'll, it'll do well within the data center. But if you combine that with the uh, Naples or Epic CPUs, they're going to have a huge chunk of that market. A huge chunk. It's not going to be small. Um, and I think that's where they'll win. You know, um, NVIDIA is there first. They've got first mover advantage, but... I think um, um, AMD will do very, very well there, and it will it will scale a lot quicker. 
although you see the profits a lot slower uh, they were saying that you know for the profits to come through it'll be a lot slower uh, from that but I think it'll scale a lot quicker you know it'll be a lot quicker than people have anticipated on that side um, what else was there new data center entry AMD rocking oh. hmm. Yeah, so that that's the epics uh, Ep epic CPU um, port demonstration MCM server embedded and semi custom for it. Yeah, so this this is all about the the server center and what they're going to be doing, and we've already talked about it, and that's what I've been saying. So you got CPU and GPU here, epic, um, and they've got loads of different models that are going to be there. So wrapping up. This is this article is by Forbes. It's a good article. It's it's a good summary. I didn't want to take too long going through absolutely every single thing uh, because there is a lot. And um, if you want um, on YouTube, I think there's um, the analyst there, the entire video if you want to uh, watch that. But it is really good stuff. I I saw no reason why the stock should go down again. Um, but I think it hasn't gone down all the way to ten. So and we're at eleven and a half roughly. So people do generally agree that yes, we're making progress, and if uh, if you really look at the logic of it, it's kind of really silly. So I'll just go back to this and just show you. So um, if you if you really look at this, I always find this amazing that you know people say well oh it's not valued, it's not it's not worth that much. Yeah, okay. So here they had uh, if you look at last year in August time they they you know. They, they had all the announcements they knew at that time that Ryzen was going to come out and all that all that stuff but still the stock dropped to five dollars so apparently it wasn't worth that <laughs> and then it goes up to um what is it um eight dollars and then eight eight nearly nine dollars and then it comes back down um again apparently it wasn't worth that it's worth that and then it comes all the way back up right back to 12 and then it comes back down at the beginning of the year so it's not even worth that yeah and remember at this point everyone knows Ryzen is coming out they know that yeah it's just world events I think have something to do with it but at this point there was the Trump rally so I don't know what that was about um, and some of it is just pointless um, it's not consistent if you if you have a set amount of expectations and it doesn't meet that expectation okay it goes down but before that time here, there was absolutely no reason for it to come down. So this just teaches you that the, the stock can go up and down as it wants, right? So don't pay any attention to that. Just long it. Go long term. I mean, this was completely ridiculous. But just long it and eventually it goes back up again. And we're all in profit. My buy-in, to be honest, the majority of my buy-in was at 11.6. So I'm not far off it. And actually, I was in profit here. Um, I just chose not to sell. I was asked, do you want to sell? You know, I said no. Um, I think from the nearly 6,000 shares I have, only 500 were bought at this point, 14, I think it was 14 point something, 14.42. The rest were bought at 11.6. Um, I bought them at this point here. There. So, um, you know, I'm okay. I think it goes up. Uh, stay with it. I think there's some issue here between the the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. Once we got between these lines, it's kind of finding it hard to break out through that. This is just a bit of technical stuff. Um, you know, a lot of people do look at technical charts and try and uh, predict which way it's going to go. So I think it needs to break through the 50-day moving average, and once it does that, then it'll go higher. Um, but for now, without any real news, I mean, there is all this news about the new products that they, they showed off. But it's not moving the stock at the moment. I think what people are looking for is a good earnings, something with good numbers saying we're making profit, or a licensing licensing deal or something like that uh, to show that they're making profit. Yeah. So um, until that happens, I think we're still staggering slightly upwards. Keep going until I mean, unless world events affect it. But over the long haul, I think by uh, first quarter next year, or actually uh, fourth quarter, sorry, next year you'll see it will be higher up, right? We'll definitely see 15s again. Um, 17 to 20, again, I maintain my uh, my range, 17 to 20. 17 at the lower range, 20 is a reasonable uh, level for, for the stock. And then after that, uh, it could go higher as well. But 
that's that's at that point I'll be selling and reevaluating. So anyway, guys, that's the um, the update for this um, week. Um, just to say uh, on on the last note, I I am currently trying to um, get together. A lot of people are asking me about um, how, you know investing and how how, you, how do you get started? So because I I got a lot, around six thousand shares, um, I was being asked that you know how did you manage to get the money together to do all that kind of stuff. So it's it's a completely different way of thinking, uh, mentality wise. So what I've done is on at the end of each video, you're going to be seeing there'll be some links to uh, a couple of books. So one of the books is Rich Dad Poor Dad, and that's a completely different way of thinking when you're uh, when when you start off, you know, in in life, and you you're just getting into a job, right? Um, I I read that book, but I didn't take it literally everything. So um, for example, he talks about how you should um, invest to make money. So you should, um, you know, start up a business and so on. What I did was my my approach was a hybrid approach, which is you can do that as well, and it works very well. So what I did is I had two days a week where I did a part time job, and that uh, made money for me, and that covered my expenses. And then the rest of the uh, the time, uh, the the other five days in the week, I would go and start a business, do a partnership, do something, um, and then that would bring in the real money, you know. Uh, the weekend job was my eating money, so it's my safety net. No matter what happens, I have that. I did that for a good 10 years, working with young people in the community center. And then the rest of the time, I was, um, you know, investing and making money that way. And that works. I mean, with Rich Dad Poor Dad, it just teaches you how to think differently, how to plan differently, and how to basically just go out there and start a business and do it that way. And how all that works. It's a good book. It should be read, um, and it'll teach you a lot. Um, but again, with that uh, model, if you follow that, then it, when you fail, you feel big, and you're you know you're on your on your bum, and you're not you're not going to be uh, having any money, which uh, is where most people end up. You know, uh, at some point, uh, even me, I had a down period, so that can happen. So just to be on the safe side, you can do a half and half approach, but it's a good book to read. The other one for investing in stocks and shares is uh, Intelligent Investor um, by uh, was it Alexander Graham Bell, whatever his name was. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's a good book anyway. Um, I read it a long time ago. It's a, it's a good book. Um, so both of those you'll see in the descriptions. Again, it helps me a little bit. Um, I'm trying to set up a site right now where I'll be doing a lot of... Uh, uh, marketing of products and so on but my target is and I, I just need to sell one product within six months to keep that um, uh, Amazon uh, you know deal going on where I can I can sell this stuff um, so I just need to sell one in six months so if I sell one in six months I'm happy guys um, it just keeps it going and it'll give me time to develop the website and so everything else out um, so yeah, guys, I'll I'll put it on here when when the website is done and everything is proper, you know, it's it's up there. I'll I'll put it on here. You can have a look at it, and again, you know, it's it's a it's, a, it's another income stream. Uh, what happened with me was in the beginning I had six months worth of uh, living expenses. Uh, I didn't run out of money. I I just when I when it dropped by twenty seven percent in a day, I realized that it could take a lot longer. Cause remember we were messing around at the ten dollar mark for a few days. So I, I thought maybe it'll be a flat line for a while and then uh, we'll get some really positive earnings uh, by next earnings and then it'll go back up. That was my my thinking at the time. Uh, and I thought in the meantime, you know, I, I don't see it going below 10 really. So there's I, I didn't feel like there was any danger. So I thought, what should I be doing? You know, how can I use my time productively? Um, because if I don't, if, if this goes beyond the, the three month you know, line that I'm thinking about, three moments, then I'm out of cash. So um, this is why I try to go out there and get a job, you know, part time or something. And I am doing something right now to make a bit of extra cash. Um, yeah. So in in the meantime, I'm trying to do another passive income, and that's what this is about. That's why uh, I've got the, the books on there to keep my uh, my thing going. Um, and remember, it's just one book in six months. So anyway, guys, uh, if you like this video, let me know. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Um, and um, if you, if you're an investor, stay long.
it'll work out. I'm in it. <laughs> if you know, a lot of people say to me, you know, if um, why why didn't you come out? Why don't you you know just sell up, take your losses, or whatever? Just think about. It. I could have taken my losses at ten dollars. You know, I didn't. I stayed with it. It went to twelve. I was in profit. I could have taken a profit and come out, but I didn't because I have faith in it that it'll go back up, and it'll, it'll you know once all the information comes out, then it's like um, the train has left the station. You know, people start jumping on that bandwagon and saying, okay, where well, it's going up, it's going up and up and up, and you know, then start really taking off, and I think that happens mostly towards the end of the year. Um, but anyway, next next earnings because there's low expectations. Remember, all the hype is gone here. The momentum is gone. The hype is gone. It is rebuilding, and it rebuilt quite a few times. So it dropped here, rebuilt up. Yeah, dropped here. Goldman Sachs downgrade. Tried to rebuild back up. It dropped again. Now it's trying to rebuild back up. And as long as there's no negative news, there will it'll come to a point where it'll stabilize. And then I think it needs good news. So the by the next earnings. Um, if it doesn't happen, then it'll be the earnings after that. That'll be the third, third quarter earnings, and definitely. Uh, but I think second quarter earnings are definitely likely to, to, to be good because remember, all the rise in sales for the three months will be in there. The, um, the, the launch will have happened, I think, by then of Vega as well. Um, so you see rise in five sales, rise in seven sales in there, definitely. Maybe some rise in three, and then uh, the uh, Vega uh, launch in there. So it should be pretty good. Anyway, guys, take care. Sorry, it's been taken, you know, video taken, taken so long. Um, so, see you later, guys. Take care. Bye bye.